Brandon has been helping me. He's been really mentoring me a lot throughout my uh, jump from corporate America into uh, you know, consistently acquiring companies and getting out of uh, some uh, difficult situations. And so he's he's got a really interesting story about, you know, how overcoming challenges. And I know that, you know, Ryan, maybe with you, you're also in a similar situation where there's a lot of challenges and you're kind of maybe stuck, frustrated, don't know how to get out uh, or even get through. Um, and it'd be cool to hear from you if you have any of that, um, just to know and kind of give Brandon some context about you. And then we can kind of go into maybe uh, Brandon and in his story. So yeah, Ryan, any anything you want to share on your side? Sure. Yeah, I'll. Uh, some of the, the the past past history isn't isn't really relevant or important anymore. But uh, in about 2010, I started a an e-commerce website for uh, it was a golf business. I started for discounts on tee times, and I figured. I just built it. They would come, and they didn't. And it was expensive back then. It wasn't uh, wasn't like today where there's Shopify and Wix and all these other plug and play WordPress type websites. Um, so I went into some debt. Ended up getting a, a day job um, at my buddy's company in the oil and gas industry. Um, was making pretty good money there, um, paying off my debts. Um, but in the meantime, all the competitors caught up and passed me. Um, I pivoted from, from that model to affiliate marketing. I learned the affiliate marketing model. Um, and then um, I started up a few affiliate sites. From there, I got ended up getting a private coach that was helping me with the acquisition side. Um, so I learned how to buy businesses with a few strategies. So then I within his group, I partnered with a couple of guys. We ended up buying a few businesses. I had uh, a lead generation. We have Amazon FBA, um, Shopify, Etsy, um, kind of a few different areas. Um, and now um, I've since partnered with some new guys and we're, we bought another business in the on a Shopify site that uh, we're re in the middle of revamping. And if everything goes well with these new partners, then we want to scale up and uh, Buy a bunch more and do the um, private equity model. We're going to raise the aggregator plus. model, man. That's the uh, that's yeah talks about it. Be I, I, I hate careful, the word. Man. Be <laughs> careful with that model. That model gets people into some trouble. Yeah, but fair enough. Good. Yeah, for no, you I, I don't like I don't like the aggregator word. I think that word's terrible, and, and even roll up is hard because it's not really a roll up for what we're doing. Um, yeah. But, but yeah. Are you so you're you're gonna structure it like uh probably like a corporate holding company with you know some kind of shared services agreement between your portfolio, but operate them independently as brands. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And the brands will they'll all be like if we if we go the route, depending on how how things shake out, but if we do it, that'll be uh, the holding company will probably be uh, a private equity fund. Oh, all right, interesting structure. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, good for you, man. That's Thanks. awesome. Congratulations on all the success. Yeah, thank you. I've been on mute. Sorry. What's been some of the challenges you've been facing, uh, Ryan, that, you know, you're kind of like, man, I wish I had some help with this. Uh, you know, and it could be anything, right, from a financial to even health, right? Because I know Brandon talks a lot about just not, you know, not just like the you know, financial stuff. Like there's a lot of the pieces that I know I, I didn't have um, when it comes to finances and everything, but, you know, bringing it all together, uh family wise you know like are you able to manage everything because <laughs> i know yeah for sure it yeah it's lot. busy i got uh i got a young family so um i got a one-year-old and a three-year-old so so life's chaotic um my getting up at 5 a.m went from from just getting up at 5 a.m to try and get stuff done to i have to be up at like 5 a.m now so that changed my routine so um it's fitting everything in is 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 kind of tricky. Staying disciplined when I'm exhausted because kids are up all night and stuff like that. So being able to to get work done. But the major challenges that we're um, in the near future are are going to be capital raising um, for the fund. Um, my network isn't super deep in that area, so that's something I'm going to have to dig deep and try and learn and and, and figure that out. Um, partnerships. My my current partners. Um, the reason why we haven't started the fund yet is because um, I'm still kind of vetting out these guys. Um, they have a proven track, track record of having an agency and stuff like that, but I've never worked with them personally. So um, the process of this business that we just bought that we're revamping is um, taking way longer um, going through all the steps of new suppliers, new packaging, new everything, right? So it's taking way longer to get to the point where I can test out my new partners. Um, so if they're as good as they say they are, then I don't have a problem there. If they're not as good as they say they are, then 
partnerships or or that sort of side of things might be might be something that I'm looking for. I'm always looking to just kind of figure yeah. out how to get new and better partners to, yeah. to grow with. The more yeah. the better your network, the faster it is to grow. Um, those are kind of the big challenges right now um, that I think are like in my immediate future. Um, okay. And then and then I'm working on deal flow as well for for e-commerce businesses. So that's a bit of a challenge okay. right now. But okay. cool. Well, thank different. you, thank you for sharing. And I saw we had Eddie just join or not just joined, but he was. Uh, joined a while back. Uh, hey, Eddie, thanks for joining. Are you there? I see you on mute. There he is. Hey, yeah, sorry. All good. Welcome, All good, man. Thanks for joining. I know. Welcome, man. Uh, you had emailed to me, and we were like, "Hey, let's make this happen." This uh, this little session. So I appreciate it. this. Is uh, you know anticipated to be a series event. Uh, if we can get some more people to show up, I think. Um, it'd be great to hear a little bit about you too, Eddie, just to know a little bit about your background and also uh, any of the challenges that you're faced with. Maybe there's a bit of a mastermind group here that we can leverage each other's uh, skill sets as well. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I just cut the last part of Ryan's thing. Um, um, yeah. So currently I do architecture and interior design. I'm a design manager for a real estate developer here in Dallas. Um, so I've been doing, yeah, I've been doing design for yeah past 11 years or so. Um, and I've always been interested in music. I've been playing music since I was really little. And so that's always been like a big thing that I've been wanting to do. And, um, and so about 2020, I guess when the whole pandemic started, uh, the firm that I worked for, they had a big layoff and so my whole team got laid off so I said like, okay well maybe this is my time I'm gonna do some music stuff <laughs> I started yeah. a podcast um just to like network meet other people and it went and uh I think on the third day it became like top 10 on iTunes in the U.S. around oh, the nice. world and all that stuff yeah so it was pretty cool um so through that I met some people um and so um uh, one of them is, so there's like a band called 98 Degrees and with Backstreet Boys and NSYNC all that back in the day. Yeah. And so um, Jeff is one of those guys. And so I'm through my podcast connected with him and through him, I, we connected with another um, one of his business partners because um, my goal eventually, of course, is to start a fund. And so, okay, what if he's he's been working on projects you know like the past 30 years and so he usually goes and raises money for each one so it's like why don't we just start a fund we just raise money once that way you don't have to keep going yeah. out and so that's what we're working on right now uh, our first project that we're working on before we officially launch the fund is a benefit concert uh, i think i mentioned this to you quickly yeah, rich that, yeah. um yeah so it's in vegas so we have partnerships with iHeartRadio. um they're going to market the whole thing and all the radio stations. We, it's going to be at the Allegiant stadium where the Raiders play. And that's, we have a relationship with the owner, Mark Davis and David Siegel. So it's been cool. Cause we have all the, like the people that we need in order to make the event happen. Yeah. Yeah. And right. So I've just been on the fundraising side. Um, so there's been, a so I've been able to, lots of challenges with that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's been interesting. So I have, we were looking to raise 8 million. I've raised 3 million so far. Um, and then, yeah, because everyone that I keep meeting, they're always really into real estate or something like that most people do, you know, like stocks or hedge funds, stuff like that. So it's been interesting kind of, you have to find that the right people because it's also yeah. not just like you get a good return but also like this is more about the experience like the people that we bring to the concert they're going to get to you know hang out with the artists they're going to you know it's be kind of behind the scenes on a lot of things sure. same thing with like the film whenever we we have partnerships with warner brothers and those people and sure for the investors like okay we get to bring them on set so they can see you know the movies and so it's more, it's a different type of investor I've noticed. Um, yeah, yeah. And so that's, yeah, it's been interesting, but also kind of kind of fun just getting to. Yeah, yeah. To well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I guess both of you guys have really unique, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, stories and what you're trying to achieve. And 
Um, you know, I think one, one of the cool things about now this little group that I want to start building up more of from these sessions is getting people to, uh, yeah, from different backgrounds to share. And so, you know, one of the things that I, I really value from, from Brandon, and please, Brandon, since you are honored guest, uh, share your story as well. Um, you know, Brandon has come from working in private equity, he's done a lot of really good uh, good deals and, um, and, you know, he's looking to help. And this is why I brought him on these sessions and I'm going to bring more people because he's a wealth of knowledge and he's, um, not only experienced in, in acquisitions, but also in just, uh, in life, we'll call it and helping mm -hmm. he's helped me a lot. So yeah, Brandon, why don't you just kind of share a little bit about you and, and really how, why you're offering help? Why, why do you want to help? Yeah, yeah. So no, this is this is awesome. And Eddie, cool story, man. I'd love to hear a little bit more about when you said music, I was like, was this guy like playing guitar on the weekends at bars or what is he doing here? And I'm like, okay, cool. He's fucking funding like, you know, festivals and shit. That's amazing. Um, so I wasn't expecting that. Congratulations, man. That's badass. So my background, I am was like not your traditional kind of private equity guy. I probably don't talk like a private equity guy. I'm sort of like the anti-private equity guy, but I ended up in private equity because I always thought that that was how you built great companies. I come from an entrepreneurial family, uh, but they always ran small businesses. And so I was like, fuck that. I'm going to go build big companies. And I thought that like going to Wall Street and doing that route was how you do it. And um, maybe there's some truth to it, but I learned early in my private equity career that like you want to be on the other side of the check, right? Like I don't, I'm like this 24 year old, like trying to buy companies for, you know, 20, 30, 40 million bucks, begging people, begging CEOs to take the money. Like, please let us buy your company. And then I, I, at one point we made an offer on a deal and we got like blown out by like Sterling Partners or some group out of Chicago on a deal we liked. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, this is, this is stupid right? I want to own the business. Like, that's what I want to do. And so when I was this young associate, I was like, you know what, I, at some point, I have to go into entrepreneurship. Well, so anyway, I had this opportunity, I was poached, uh, recruited, I should say, by a couple of healthcare executives. And uh, these were experienced guys who built up these uh, substance abuse facilities in the past. And so a little personal background, I have a you know sibling that struggles with substance abuse. And so I was like, all right, cool. Well, this could be, this could be my moment, right? I'm 25 years old. And so, uh, I decide to leave and my managing director opens his Rolodex, you know, writes me a check for 25 grand. And it's like, okay, cool. Like totally supportive, go do it. And so we raise about 3 million bucks and we're off and running. We build the company up. We get, we go from like idea to, you know, 150 employees, four clinical sites, a corporate office, um, you know, you name it, 24-ish million dollars in revenue uh, in like two and a half years. So we like, this company goes crazy. Um, and then in uh, the end of 2016, we got an offer to buy the company for like $67 million. And so, you know, we do the deal, that deal closes the end of uh, 2017. And, you know, like I'm 29 years old, I'm going like, holy shit, right? Like I, I made the right choice. Like I've made a huge in positive impact in people's lives and I've done really well in the process. Now I've got a war chest. Now I can be my own fund essentially. And so what I did, I went and I uh, partnered up with a couple of like, you know, top notch real estate guys. They ran the family office for a billionaire family out of Philadelphia, the MAB paints money uh, families up there. And so these guys ran their money on the real estate side. And we built a real estate development company called Captiva Capital Partners. We focus on class A self-storage doing uh, ground up development and value add. And uh, we did probably like 40 million in post-developed value in our first 12 months. And then like all of a sudden my life fucking crumbled. Right. And so I what had happened at the previous company is I found out that there was a an active investigation going on by the government looking into an illegal laboratory kickback scheme that was going on between a lab in Florida and the partners that I had decided to get in business with when I was 20, you know, six years old. And more or less what happened, I'm skipping over all the details, but the, the government decided, you know what, we're gonna make an example out of this case and we're gonna indict like fucking everybody. And so there's like 11 or 12 people get indicted. I was the CFO of the company. They looked at me as like, you're a target, you're you know, a 
private equity guy, you know, well-educated, this, that, the other thing, you made a bunch of money. So they threw my name on the list that, you know, 31 years old by now is when this happened. Like my whole fucking life crumbles, right? My identity shatters, my, they, my wealth gets stripped. They uh, froze one of my accounts with $8 million in it. Um, you know, I had to resign from my comp all, all my companies, right? I was, I had acquisitions lined up. I had to go to them and say, Hey, yeah, this is embarrassing. Um, can't do the deal anymore. And then all of a sudden I'm sitting on my couch going, what the fuck am I going to do with my life? Right? Like I have nothing. I went from doing all of that to doing nothing. And so like my, my life, my identity, my ego, my the way that I view myself completely fucking shattered. And so this was, this was like the hardest thing I'd ever been through. I didn't, I've never really faced that level of adversity in my life before. I had a pretty easy life growing up. And so I was not prepared for it. I mean, I was self-medicating with alcohol. I was like completely out of shape. My anxiety was through the roof. My stress level was through the roof. I was like considering fucking blowing my head off, right? Like imagine that fall from grace. Right. When I was working after this deal, you know, I, I would sit down with the private equity guys that had acquired our business and they'd be like, yeah, this is Brandon. You need to know him. He's a future billionaire to sitting on my fucking couch watching Gordon Ramsay kitchen nightmares for three weeks straight because I don't know what the fuck to do with myself. Right. I want you to picture that fall. And so, you know, like that was the point where I realized that I had placed all of my worth all of the thing, everything that I saw in myself, I placed in things outside of me. And when all of that crumbles, as it does happen sometimes in life, and I, God, I hope it doesn't happen to you guys, but every now and then we face struggle, we face personal issues, we face business issues, financial issues, relationship, illness, right? We all go through it. And I realized that like, I was either going to let this moment kill me, which it does to some people. Or I was going to find a way to turn this fucking horrible thing into the, into something that helps other people. And from that moment, I committed to trying to take this and tr use it as something positive to transform the lives of other people. And so immediately what I did is I wrote a book about, you know, the process of overcoming struggle. And it was interesting because it was the beginning of my journey through that process. And then I also wrote a, like a self-directed course and I licensed it to a group that provides educational materials for prisons around the country. And so that material is still being circulated in jails and prisons around the country today. And then uh, I eventually, I, I took a deal as everybody does. Uh, it was a 37 month sentence and I was able to sort of like reverse engineer the, like a, the best possible outcome. So I only ended up doing 10 and a half months. But while I was away, I ended up because it was COVID having nothing to do with me or my behavior. I ended up doing three separate stints in solitary confinement. And what they were doing during COVID is they were just quarantining guys. They were throwing them right in the hole, which is like where they put you when you stab somebody. And so I've never been in handcuffs. I've never been in prison. I've never been in jail. I've never been arrested. I've never had any negative interactions with law enforcement. I walk into the prison, they throw me in a hole for 22 days. And it changed my life. And in that moment, I thought I was going to die. But you find that like, strength is your only choice at some point, right? You have to just kind of man up. And I started reflecting on who I was as a person and who I wanted to become. And I decided in that moment, I was going to build a life of discipline and structure. And I was going to actually walk the walk. There was so much of me before that was all about, it was arrogant, right? And I had had success. So I thought I could back it up with, with wealth. And I realized that there was just this gap. There was this lack of foundation that I hadn't fucking built because I was so focused on the external success. And I had it. And so I realized that I was doing it all ass backwards, right? And I, from that moment, I decided that I was gonna build a rock solid foundation. And that foundation is rooted in fitness, mindset, discipline, structure, and living a life that is in service of others. And I committed to that. And while I was away, I, uh, so I volunteered in the GED department. I taught grown men how to read, which is a wild experience. Like you're sitting down with like a 45 year old guy who can't read at a third grade level. Um, 
And then I also taught entrepreneurship classes. I taught real estate investing classes. I taught uh, financial literacy, you name it. I did everything that I possibly could to try to be congruent, right? And lift up the spirits of the people around me. And so, you know, I returned home and I, I still do that today. I'm an entrepreneurship coach for a group called Inmates to Entrepreneurs, which teaches guys and gals coming right out of prison, how to start and build companies from like, with like less than a thousand dollars, which I like, that's, that's my favorite thing that I that's do. Awesome. Like, <laughs> you know, I've, like... bought, I've bought companies since I've been home. I've done all this other shit. I would do that all day long. And so anyway, like that's, that's where I come from. That's my story. And what I'm building now, I'm writing my second book, uh, which is almost done. I have a podcast called the convictions podcast where I interview like really fucking interesting people. Um, you know, I've got, I've had Garen Jones on there. This guy named Alex Smith. Uh, I have an, I just landed an interview with a guy named Wes Watson. Um, and so like, and what I share is like the, the non-highlight reel of, it's a lot of entrepreneurship, but it doesn't have to be. It's people sharing their, their challenging experiences in life and like finding the wisdom that is in these like circumstances that we don't expect to pop up in our lives. It's like, you know, if Instagram is the highlight reel, it's the opposite of that. And getting, people to, <laughs> yeah. getting, getting people to be like very candid about the shit that they've been through because it's right. real. And I don't think there's enough of that out there. And so right. as a part of that, I'm building this coaching brand. So I was like, well, if I can train like drug dealers, how to like build companies because actually they're fucking amazing entrepreneurs. They just have never had any like guidance or they, nobody's taught them anything. Yeah. Yeah. In the right direction. Sell drugs. I, I helped one guy who like, he literally, his grandma taught him how to deal drugs when he was 10. Like that's what, that's what wow. the, the level that you're dealing with. That's and so um, anyway, so what I'm building now is really like a, essentially a coaching brand because I've been through it. Like there's so many people out there coaching who are like, you know, they did 20 years at like a big corporation. No offense, Rich. I'm not trying to like shit on corporations, but like these people haven't faced real adversity in the business like war game, which is what it is. Right. And I've seen mm -hmm. it. And so I'm trying to right now, I've literally just started building this brand around helping entrepreneurs um, like essentially level up in all areas of their life so that they have the confidence, they have the strength, they have the structure, they have the discipline to do what is necessary so that you can be successful and still be a good leader, a good father, not neglect your health and your fitness and all this other stuff. Yeah. And so yeah. um, I'm deeply, deeply passionate about that, but I'm still doing deals. Um, you know, I just did a software deal recently. So I do a fair bit of business coaching as well. Yeah, so that's one of the things, I mean, Thank you, Brandon, for sharing. Because I know, yeah, yeah. I know, we're kind of limited actually on time, and we want we wanted to get an hour in. But if we yeah. maybe we can jump uh, to you know some questions, because th that's the part, Eddie and, and Ryan, right? I know that myself, I'm going through a lot. You know, even though I've succeeded, I have acquired businesses. I yeah, I was working in corporate America. I, I working in corporate America didn't necessarily prepare me for entrepreneurship, and I don't know if you Absolutely guys have, not. have that story. Yeah. So you know, I, I am facing, you know, some really tough times and, you know, and I have now Brandon kind of in my corner, not only on the business side, but also on the kind of mentorship mindset, you know, type of side, which sometimes I need, right. I've always been a high performer and I needed another high performer to almost compete against or to push me. And I don't know if you guys uh, need that as well. Um, but, you know, that's what Brandon has been to me. And, I don't know if you guys have any specific questions, Eddie or Ryan, but th those are the types of things that, um, you know, if you want to ask any questions about your challenges or what you're going through, Brandon can can kind of can kind of share, right? Like, what is what is his blueprint? What what does he do? I've, seen, do I've seen so much shit that it's it's crazy, right? And the, and the point of this group is to really, it's it's all entrepreneurs. So I just signed a real estate developer recently. Um, it's all all the other guys are entrepreneurs. And so it's, it's a lot of people, it's called white collar savage, right? So it's taking people from that white collar world and turning them into fucking monsters. And it's having the community of people who are like-minded, who are trying to overcome the exact same obstacles. It could be you're balancing your fitness with your business. That's what's an issue with one of the guys in our group. And he's fucking out of shape. He's, you know, he's basically killing himself, but he's making money but he's out of balance, right? He's out of alignment. He's lacking that same foundation that I didn't have, right? And so that's really what we're building. 
Um, and like Rich said, it's, it's comes back to accountability as well. Like I call guys out on their bullshit all the time in the group. And, you know, I called Rich out recently on, you know, not making enough calls. And like, he went off, made some calls and made some fucking money. Right. Like it's, it's all about having that accountability, that person in your corner who is fighting with you, who's fucking locking arms with you and you're going to war together. And so yeah. that's like the type of community that I'm trying to build high energy, like excited people trying to do good stuff and be around like like-minded. And also have gone through, you know, what I think what we're all going For through sure. right now, which is the yes. same, the same thing. It's, you know, uh, raising money, uh, growing companies, uh, you know, building wealth, uh, doing it in a very strategic, smart way versus, you know, what, what others uh, are doing. So uh, I don't know, do you have time, Brandon, or, or do you have to, to, you have to jump off? I just want to make yeah, sure. If you guys, if you guys have questions or look, if you want to open up about something that you're dealing with or a problem you're facing, like, guys, I've fucking seen it all. I've been through it all. Like, you know, that's the kind of person that I am is you just, you can communicate with me on a, on a level that I think you know, some other people might not feel comfortable doing it. So if you got questions for me, fire away. Hey, Brandon, I, the, I love the story. It's awesome, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Hey, you, you went through like uh, an identity crisis, let's say. I don't know. How, I don't know if that's how you want to describe it, right? Where you were, your identity was tied to your net worth. I feel yeah. that same way. And I'm like, when I started the golf business, I, I told everybody about it. Hey, this is it. This is it. I was so sure. I saw the vision. I saw everything. It's going to work out. I'm going to be great. This was back when Groupon was a thing. And I was like, I've just got to get on Groupon. The thing will take off, whatever. Groupon rejected me. The vision started cl crumbling. I needed money. And then next thing I know, I was, I was meeting up with people, buddies, and being there like, oh, man, how's it going? How's the business going? I'm like, man, it's like, it's failing. Like, and I didn't want to tell them. And I'd be like, no, it's, it's good. It's good. It's good. You always got to put that brave front on. And then, and, and so, yeah, so that, that identity is tied to my identity is tied to my success. And um, like recently everything I've changed and I've got like a different identity of family and, and whatever else, but I'm just kind of curious about like how you overcame that and how like, like in my head, I'm not where I wanted to be my vision of, of my future. When I was younger, it was, I was way ahead of where I'm at and I'm, and I'm happy with where I'm at. And then they don't want to like discount that, but I'm curious about like how you got to, you got over that and how, or if there's resources or if it was just like spending time in your own head because you were alone for three weeks or whatever there. So, um, no speak about that at all. Look, man, that, that's a, that's awesome that you just like said that and that you were cool talking about that. Cause as, as men, especially, I think we have a hard time talking about that ego because it's like, I, I don't know what it is. It's just in our fucking nature, but the greatest form of leadership that you can demonstrate is how you conduct yourself. And you should be able to walk into a room, whether you're flat broke, whether you have a big business or you don't and have that sense of confidence because you know that you conduct yourself based on a, a program, a daily program, the daily habits, the structure and the discipline to get everything you need to do done. Because what's gonna happen in your life is you are going to have seasons, right? And so if I was sent back to prison tomorrow, I wouldn't change a fucking thing about my routine. I wouldn't change a thing about my life. My structure, the way that I live my life is rooted from that experience. Now, conversely, if I was to sell one of our businesses for like a hundred million bucks, I wouldn't change a fucking thing about my life. It's taking pride in your structure. It's taking pride in the discipline of your daily routine. And that can be making time for my, for your family. So first thing in the morning, I, I wake up super early as well, right? Like before 5 a.m., I structure those 15, 20 minutes to be with my wife. I go wake her up. I, I sit there for those 20 minutes. We enjoy our coffee. I check, out, I check out of all this other stuff I'm doing. And I make time to try to be a good husband. I don't have kids yet, but we have one on the way. We'll have one in June. And so that's going to be yes. another challenge, right? But it's about taking fucking pride in the work that you're doing and being proud of yourself for keeping those promises to yourself. So when you're in a cell, what do you have? My wealth was, my wealth was stripped, gone. All my companies, gone. This you know private equity boy wonder identity that I had, gone. What did I have? I had my daily fucking program, which was reading, writing, exercise. 
And so that's why I'm saying like a lot of what I do now is rooted in the program of fitness and mindset. The reason fitness is number one is because there's this real connection between body and brain. That's a real thing, right? If you're in a bad fucking mood, like drop to the floor and do 25 burpees. I swear to God, it'll change your day. And so when you're, when you're, go when Ryan, you are, go. <laughs> like, I, uh, I, I won't go into a, a funny story about that, but like, there's a reason that fitness is number one. And it is because you have, to, when you're in that situation, when you're in an environment where everything is negative, dude, you're locked. Like imagine locking yourself in a bathroom for 22 straight days. Imagine that you've got nothing, dude. I didn't even have, they didn't even give me silverware. They just throw a tray in there. And I had an ID card. Like a, it looks like a driver's license, right? When you, when you check in, I would fucking eat with my ID card. Like that's what you're dealing with. So when your mind is pushed to that point, you realize that everything in life is based on your own habits and the pride that you take in your daily routine. And so what I encourage you to do is instead of shifting your self-worth into the things that are outside of you, shift it back in here, shift it back into being the man that you know you want to be, right? Whatever that person is that you aspire to be, go fucking walk that walk. And then you can go, you, if you walk that walk and you know, every single day you're doing everything you need to be doing, you can walk into any room confidently about who you are. And that's the exact approach I take today. Like, do you think that I want to walk into a room and say, Hey, my name is Brandon. I'm a fucking felon. Fuck that. Right. Like, no, I'm, I'm a, I'm a savage. Like, this is what I do. Right. One of the so, hardest things that, yeah, I remember Brandon was telling me was that, you know, to this day, right. If someone were to Google his name, you know, yeah. all of the, you know, the charges, right. Are, are there for anyone to find. And I think I remember Brandon, you were saying that technically right now you, you can't, you're not really, you're not bankable. Right. So like from a business no. standpoint, you are literally with your hands to hide tied behind your back. Right. And tied yet, behind my back, my legs tied together, the whole thing. And I bought two companies. <laughs> yeah yeah so i think it kind of speaks to the this kind of this test the testament of look yeah brennan has you know um he's he's living it right and and, and i think one of the things that i i personally uh value from that is that i'm i'm now surrounded in, in a group right or other people that are doing it too um you know for for me i was surrounded by a lot of this <laughs> negative people or people were like oh yeah you know, yeah, they, they look at you, they say, you know, shouldn't you be so and so by now? Like, shouldn't you have done all this stuff by now? And, and yeah, maybe that trajectory should have been there, but it's not. And when you when you're not there, I know, for me, at least it like it sucks if it hurts, right? But then when you're in a group with other people where yeah, you're openly sharing, you know, look, things don't go the way they are, uh, or they're not, you know, so having like, you know, people like Brennan in the corner, have, has been helpful for me, right? So again, sorry, I just wanted to add that in there. Um, was that helpful, Ryan? I just wanted to- Yeah, see. for sure, yeah. I, yeah. You kind of triggered something I had before where, where I changed my mindset from um, be like the doing, like, yeah, it's like the, the like, yeah, I'm not there yet, but it's, it's process, right? Like with the, um, enjoy the process, right? So it's like, I lost yeah. my train of thought there, so but yeah, but you you triggered something there that was like, yeah, it's not about it's not about where I'm at, it's where it's what I'm doing, and and what I'm doing is learning every day, and that's one of my core values is learning. So that's what I tie, I should tie my identity and my happiness to instead of dollars, right? So um, it's hard when when you when you're surrounded by people or or you you meet up with people that. Like you could do it internally when other people are doing it towards you. It's different because they're, you feel that judgment. And I know it's like, you're right. You, you just got to kind of be proud of who you are. I got buddies that are, that are like, for lack of better words, idiots that are doing probably better than me because they happen to be like a plumber who got a crazy job, who ended up building a company that he's like, doesn't even know how to run his own books, but he's like a millionaire because you just happen to be the plumber in the right place at the right time. And I'm like, like, it's one of those one guys that's like, um, like, how did you become so, so much more successful? How is that even fair? Like, I'm working my ass off here. And 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 so it's like, um, it, it's those, it's those mental hurdles that are that are hard that you just kind of gotta 
that I'm learning how to push out. And that's why I was kind of curious about yeah. your perspective. Because yeah. obviously you get that with, with your identity thing there. So, so yeah, there's two things. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let me jump in, Rich, because I want to hit on something that you were talking about before. And Ryan, I, I got you, man. So like, um, these are some of the people you're talking about are fucking fair weather friends. I was writing about this this morning in my bias. One of the chapters of my book is on mentorship. And I, I experienced this. Those same people who would like sing my praises because like I, I was tied to a result that went well at the time. It had nothing to do with fucking me. You think those people call me anymore? No, they don't fucking call me. Like Rich, like the guys you're talking about, those are, those are fair weather friends, man. Fuck those people, right? You yeah. want to be around real people who are actually have your back, whether you're in a good swing or a downswing. We all are going to have these seasons in life. It's the way it works, right? And Rich, you might feel like you're walking into a losing season right now. Do you have the right support system and the people around you who are going to help pull you out of that season? And then the same people are going to cheer for you when you're in that winning season again, right? So like those fair weather friends, man, like you, you got to avoid it. And like, it doesn't matter. And this is what's getting me to your point, Ryan. Like the only thing that matters is that you keep those promises to yourself that you are congruent yeah. with who the fuck you are and that every single day you take that step towards being the better man that you want to be for your kids and your wife and yourself. And that's what like, fuck all those other people, forget them. Like don't measure yourself against them. Measure yourself against who you were yesterday. And I know that that's probably a cliche, but for me, like having to rebuild my own ego and my own identity from the ground up, that, that has helped me tremendously because I looked at myself like, uh, you know, like I was untouchable. And then all of a sudden I'm like an outcast. And so it's like that total swing. And then you realize you're neither of those labels. You are the product of your actions. You are the product of the work that you put in every single day. That's your identity. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. Appreciate I it. I love it. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Eddie, do you have any questions? Uh, I want to make sure that if you had anything, uh, I know you're on mute right now, but are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I have to uh, have random questions and people popping up, so I have to keep. I've been oh, listening the whole time, okay, so okay. thanks, Brandon, for sharing. No, it's all good. Um, all good. No, I just wanted yeah. to make sure we we didn't uh, we didn't lose you. And and if no, you I, wanted... I've been yelling in Eddie's ear the whole time. <laughs> just like, you know, yeah, I've had people re repeat a few things. I'm like, what? What you say? <laughs> okay. uh, but no, Ryan, I also have a one and three year old, so I can relate uh, nice. with your story. Uh, but no, yeah, I guess my biggest thing is um, approaching, um, I guess, different types of people for like, I guess, different types of investments. So like, you know, like I mentioned, like, it's been a bunch of people in real estate and just like, I've been talking to them, like, okay, do you have someone who you think might be interested? So that's kind of been how I've been growing the network and it's taken a while, but it hasn't been that long either. And I just started doing this since like August. And so, um, yeah, I guess how, how would you keep the momentum going? And um, I don't know, I yeah, guess kissing I'm whole, so like, pretty. Kissing, kissing the frogs, right? As they say, how do you keep yeah, kissing yeah, the yeah, frogs? Yeah. No matter, mm -hmm. despite knowing that, you know, the frogs that you're kissing don't seem to uh, yield. Uh, <laughs> you know uh some results uh, yeah i mean that's that's a really yeah. good one right because i know for myself too brandon right like you know you're going down the path and then you just you know you're trying to figure stuff out they don't work how do you what's the perseverance like and how do you what you have to like kind of come up with tactics right like what, what do you do well i've got a, a sagely piece of advice for you um kiss more fucking frogs No. So, I mean, look, if you're, if you're trying to be more efficient about your, if that's your question, right. How, how can you be more efficient about the people you approach? So, I mean, there, I don't know if you've engaged a professional money finder. That's a, an actual thing that people get paid to do. Raising a fund is extremely hard. It's extremely hard for a number of reasons um, but it's especially difficult if you don't have a track record and it, 
Eddie, I've known you for five minutes, so I don't really know anything about what you've done. It sounds like you've done some really cool stuff, but you know, what they look for in a lot of cases is a team that has um, executed on that track record. Now you only need 8 million bucks, right? And you're, you're actually not that far away. No, hold on. You're actually not that far away from that goal. So it sounds to me like you have a high net worth investor type raise and I'm a little bit surprised that, you know, the guy from 98 degrees, you know, hasn't been able to, you know, kind of stroke, bring those relationships or stroke that check. Right. I mean, that that's probably what I would be doing if it was only 8 million bucks, but there are like real groups out there that are like entertainment focused. I mean, have you guys like had some paid for a list of these people? How much work have you put into that? Yeah. So they, uh, yeah, I mean, they've been raising money for other projects. So it's some, it's besides a concert. Uh, the concert's kind of like my thing that I'm raising money for. Okay. Um, that's kind of my, I guess my contribution to the, the team. Cause they, yeah, we, they brought in, you know, we have, they brought in iHeartRadio. Then, you know, Mark Davis, the NFL guy, David Siegel is putting up another few million. So your piece uh, is contingent upon bringing capital to the table. Right, for this. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, you know, if I'm you, I'm, I'm hammering every, you know, every entertainment investor that you could possibly find over and over and over again. Um, you know, I, again, relationships, that's 8 million bucks. That to me sounds like a, I'll call it a family and friends raise. I, you're not going to get any institutions. Well, you might. Um, but there are very, very specific niche players who are active in that world. And those are the people that I would focus on. And you can get these lists. Now, PitchBook is a good resource. It's a little expensive. Um, you could always call them and see if you could buy a list from them and then just start fucking hammering that list, but make sure that your presentation is locked up, right? So like, you're going to need to have your track record. You're going to need to have your team really laid out. You're going to need to have, you know, probably all of the examples of the other transactions or deals that you've worked on to prove that you know what you're doing. Uh, and then the relationships don't hurt either. So, you know, I think what you said in the beginning was that you're just kind of asking for the introductions. I think that's good because uh, warm introductions are always going to be your best. Like nothing beats a warm intro. Um, but if you send me what you have, uh, I, I have a guy in mind, I can't promise anything, but I have a guy in mind who is, um, like a real deal wall street guy. He's done probably a billion and a half in transactions, public and private stuff. Um, and I know that he's got relationships in that world. So I'd be happy to take a look. And if I think it's a fit, I could share it with him. So if yeah. that's helpful. I'm happy to help. If not, no, sorry. <laughs> no that helps thanks a lot brandon yeah awesome awesome um all right well i do know that you have to run brandon so any final thoughts or, or ways that people can just connect with you i mean one of the things i'm going to try to do is after this give them access to um this recording also to yeah. some of your links uh social accounts and things like that but yeah any final thoughts before we jump off no 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 guys look i, I appreciate the time and it was good to to hear both your stories and thanks for listening to mine and, and my yelling and craziness. Um, yeah, just check out. The only thing I would say is I'm, I'm trying to build this brand. Check out my Instagram. Uh, it's at Roy Collar Savage. I'm sure Rich will share it. And uh, like I said, if anything ever pops up in life, business, whatever, I'm here and I'm more than happy to be helpful. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'll share, I'll share your, uh, your email with them. And then if you guys want to book some time with Brandon. So one of the cool things that Brandon's going to start offering I don't know if it's out yet, but he's going to offer a couple like type of programs uh, or ways to get a hold of him, right, uh, on a more consistent basis. Um, and and that's the the cool part as well about about the group that I'm trying to build together as well is to get people that are like minded, also all high achievers, but still need that extra push, right? So um, I think I think we'll wait until that's ready, right, Brandon, and before you uh, share that out, right? Yeah. It'll be, it'll be done soon. We're, we're basically there. So, okay. Yeah. So if you guys are interested, let me, you know, let them know. Um, but until then, 
thank you guys. I uh, really appreciate you guys joining. Um, and uh, we'll we'll catch up soon. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Send us up. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Rich. See you guys. Yeah. Go get yeah. out. Later. Let's do it. All right. Bye. See you.